Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a very interesting video that normally is quite embarrassing, reacting to my Premier League predictions I did at the start of the season. Obviously the halfway stage reaction, I'll do a final reaction at the end of the season, believe it or not. Obviously I did this for the championship not too long ago, so if you're interested in that then please go and check it out. You know, you may as well, you may as well, you're on this channel. And if you aren't subscribed, you may as well subscribe as well. It's only fair, in my opinion. Premier League, that starts with A, Arsenal. Oh, what was Arsenal's last result? <laughs> At the time of recording, anyway. What was their last result? Oh, yeah, this. Been a weird season for Arsenal. First three, four games, more than that, in fact, were pretty dreadful, weren't they? You know, they were looking like they were going to be playing Luton next season, like Forest do. But uh, no. No, fair play to them. They're suddenly challenging for the Champions League spots. And I think the reason for that is the fact that they're not in European football because it can be a hindrance at times. It can be a hindrance. We've seen it many times in the past. A team gets into Europe and they struggle. It is progress, though, the fact that they've managed to get up to this level so quickly. I don't think they're personally ready to get the top four. But then again, I don't really know why they couldn't. I think it's up for grabs, I really do. I think that fourth spot is up for grabs. And if Arsenal don't play like they did against Forest, then yeah, they could definitely get the top four. On to Aston Villa, a very, very interesting club right now. Obviously losing Jack Grealish has been a major hit. I said they'd be seventh, despite the fact that they lost Grealish, but I thought they had enough quality left in that squad. And another reason why I said they're pushed on, despite losing Grealish, as big as that is, they got £100 million for him, and they reinvested that money into three separate signings, and I thought that was a really smart move. However, Buendia's not really worked, has he? He's been a bit up and down at the times. I mean, Villa fans will know better than me, let me know. Bailey's been injury prone, of course, and Danny Ings has been in and out of the team, so it just hasn't really worked, has it? There are still bonuses there, obviously. The emergence of Jacob Ramsey a bit more this season. I think he is an England international in the making, to be honest. I don't think he'll go to the World Cup, but I think definitely a future tournament. As well as the likes of Matty Cash. Oh, wait, he's Polish now. Damn it. But he's a good player, though. A good player, Matty Cash. I wonder where he came from. On to Brentford. I said 19th. They're currently in 13th. I wouldn't be surprised if they were to finish 19th next season because this happened with Sheffield United. Not quite to the same level because I don't think Brentford have been quite as good or as threatening as what Sheffield were in their first Premier League year. But, you know, it is a similar picture, really. A team that you didn't really give a chance of staying up looking pretty comfortable. They are a good team. They have some good players in there, but I just feel... I don't... I just feel like Brentford won't be in the Premier League for the long haul, to be honest. Brighton. I said 14th, they're currently in 9th place. Not a bad season at all for Brighton, even though they did have a run between September and Boxing Day without winning a game. And it was causing Brighton fans to kind of be in need of a bit of a reality check. Because when they drew the leads, I remember the Brighton fans had booed at full time. And yeah, okay, you hadn't won for about a month at this stage, but you're Brighton and Hove Albion, and you were about seventh in the Premier League at the time. This isn't just me talking, this is Graham Potter as well, because he said in his interview, I, need, I just need a bit of a history lesson on what club I'm managing. And I thought that was quite a good comeback, really, to be honest. Because, um, you know, if Brighton fans have said they would finish 7th this season, not one of them would have complained, surely. Even though they clearly have done better this season, instead of being in a relegation battle, striker is still their issue. Everyone knows this about Brighton. They're called XG United for a reason. They've got Neil Mopé, of course, who's got, who's got eight goals this season. But other than that... It's a little bit poor, isn't it? Danny Welbeck's 31. I thought he was a lot older than that, quite frankly. Other than him, they've loaned out Lacardia and Aaron Connolly. They need another option up front. And I've heard about Eddie and Ketia being linked to Brighton. Even though he was completely ghosted against Forrest, I do think that probably would be quite a good option for Brighton. Burnley, I said 15th. They're currently in 18th. And they clearly want to get relegated because they're selling Chris Wood to a relegation rival. Then again, it is the richest club in the world, so they can just buy their way out of trouble. But, that being Newcastle United, of course. I think Burnley's look is running out. We say it every year, how are they still in the Premier League when they don't invest enough in the transfer window? And it's catching up on them. They need to spend more money. And yeah, they've got new owners now, but they should have done it. You know, years ago, they've been in need of spending money. But the weird thing about Burnley is the squad isn't much different to the one that qualified for the Europa League like three, four seasons ago. It's not that much different. And that was without Maxwell Corne, who, by the way, how on earth is he playing for Burnley? So the fact that he can't play for them for the next month because of AFCOM, 
they are seeing such a heavy reliance upon him when he hasn't been in the team for this entire time and it's still a very similar side. It's quite worrying, really. And if Sean Dyche goes, God knows what the future is for Burnley. Um, it doesn't look the best, really, does it? Chelsea, I said second. They're currently in second. They've been great this season, of course. I do think of late, of course, they've been slightly slipping up. A few too many draws during the Port Everton side, a Port United side during the Brighton and Burnley as well for Chelsea standards. In a tighter race, you can't be drawing that many games. And obviously the Lukaku situation of late has been quite an interesting story. You know, the fact that he did an interview only about three months after signing for Chelsea, saying how much he loves him, so he wants to go back there one day. Mate, you're a Chelsea player now. Focus on Chelsea, you know, give you all for them. Appreciate Inter, but don't talk about them like that. You know, you got to you got to focus on Chelsea. Crystal Palace, I said 13th, they're currently in 12th. And even though that does sound still quite mediocre, Palace have been higher than that at times this season. And Palace, for once, actually look like quite an exciting proposition. They look like they're showing real ambition, with particularly, obviously, Patrick Vieira being the manager now. And I was a bit in two minds about him at first. I wasn't sure whether he was going to be a success or not, but fair play to him. He has done very well so far. He's got some good results. Palace have conceded a few too many late goals. You know, they conceded a late goal to their rivals Brighton, a late goal to Arsenal away when they were about to beat them. I think that kind of is going to ultimately decide where they finish this season. You know, drop points like that. But the likes of Conor Gallagher, Michael Elise, you know, Zaha, of course, was always going to be good for them. Everton, I said 11th, they're currently in 15th. And literally about an hour ago at the time of recording, they confirmed the sale of Luca Dean to Aston Villa. What is going on at that club? There's something really dodgy about that club right now. You know, I'm seeing Everton fans being quite concerned about the future of their club because it just doesn't feel like there's any direction. You know, I don't even support Everton, shockingly enough. There's not many giveaways, is there? But I don't... I, even I find it frustrating. I, I just don't understand it. And this is the thing with the manager, Rafa. You're going to appoint an ex-Liverpool boss. If there's anything that's going to go wrong, the fans are going to turn on him even quicker than they would with any other manager because he's got connections to your arch-rivals. And it's happened, hasn't it? You know, Everton have been even worse than they have been in the last few years. And they've turned on Rafa very, very quickly. It just does not seem to be the right fit at all. Leeds United, I said ninth, they're currently in 16th place. It does appear like a bit of second season syndrome is hitting Leeds. And I know Leeds fans will not like that phrase, but I think it is the best way of describing it. As well as the huge amount of injuries that they have had. Of course, Calvin Phillips being one of them. Obviously, a regular in England's midfield nowadays. If you're going to be missing him, you're going to struggle a bit, aren't you? Obviously, an over-reliance on players like Rafinha, I don't think it's really helped them out at all. Bamford has been injured for a long time at times this season as well. They've conceded 37 goals this season, that being the third most conceded in the division behind Norwich and Newcastle. Norwich conceding the most goals in the league with 44. They need defensive reinforcements quite quickly, Leeds. And... I don't think Sakin Bielsa would really solve much. It's a bit like Dyche at Burnley. He's kind of the heartbeat of that club and I don't think getting rid of him would be the best call. Leicester City, I said fifth and they're actually in 10th place. It's a very weird situation at that club. After winning the FA Cup, they've actually decreased and declined, haven't they? And they're not going to get the Champions League, are they? They'll be looking to get the Europa League the way they're playing. They need to be a hell of a lot more consistent. And that's been their issue. They've not been consistent enough. They clearly can do it because they've beaten Liverpool this season. They've had quite a few big wins, like they beat Newcastle 4 0 as well. But they've also had a lot of poor results, you know, outclassed by teams that were on their level a few years ago, even last season, you know. The fact that they haven't got Vardy for the next two months is going to be a big hit and they made an absolute hash of the Europa League, of course. They're going to be in the Conference League now, which literally no one cares about. Liverpool currently in third and I said they would come in third as well. A weird season for them, really. They've been amazing, but it's just unfortunate that they're in a league with Manchester City because they're even better, of course. I do think a few too many draws probably is going to ultimately catch up on them during with Brighton, during with Spurs recently. Obviously, they lost to Leicester, like I just said, but they're still obviously an exceptional side. Mo Salah is absolutely world-class and seriously should have been in contention for the Ballon d'Or. And, you know, don't get me started on the Ballon d'Or. It's an absolute farce. I think Liverpool's main goal, to be honest, is winning the Champions League for a seventh time. I think that clearly is their more 
important priority because they've won every single game in the Champions League this season, you know. I think that's their main goal. Manchester City, I said first, and of course they are in first. I mean, what can I say about them? They're just absolutely ridiculous. They are just ridiculous. They've won, what, nine games in a row in the league? And I don't even think that counts all competitions. They're just on a mental uniform. And, you know, it, it's weird because it looked like it was going to be a three-horse race at times this season with Chelsea and Liverpool. But all of a sudden, it's just all Man City dominance, isn't it? You've got to give them credit for doing that. And obviously, I mean, you've got to talk about a few of their players. Bernardo Silva, wow, what an unreal footballer he is. You know, I just love watching Bernardo Silva. City are just on another level, aren't they? You know, just, just incredible. I'll tell you who aren't on another level. Manchester United. What is that club right now? It's an absolute farce. Fourth is where I said they'd finish. They're currently in seventh. I honestly think, and I haven't, I've seen other people say this about them, Ronaldo's the issue. He obviously, you're not going to say no to Cristiano Ronaldo. And yeah, he has got them some big goals in the Champions League in particular. He's got them across the line. And he is a leader, but he's such a huge ego and such a huge character that psychologically his teammates are going to be making everything revolve around him. Even if they don't want that to be the game plan, everything is going to be get the ball to Ronaldo, get the ball to Ronaldo. And I've seen a video where Ronaldo is constantly making runs and the ball never gets to him. And it's quite funny, really. And Honestly, would United be better off without him? Yeah, I think they would, you know? And it, it sounds a bit stupid, that. But when you lose, use the logic that United were second last season, they got to the Europa League final last season, and look at where they are now. Obviously, they got rid of Oli. Have they actually got any better? No, not really. They're actually probably more stale and more boring under Rangrick. And no, he's not a permanent manager either. And I think that's also an issue. He's not a permanent manager, you know? Whoever they're going to get next season probably won't be him. They've got a huge job in their hands. Their biggest issue as well is a midfielder. They need a midfielder. McFred is not the solution. Pogba, where is he? Honestly, James Garner can't do any worse than those two. I really believe that. They need a world-class midfielder. On to Newcastle, a team that could quite easily, you know, just start dominating European football at some point in the not-too-distant future. You know, in any other season, you'd say Newcastle are destined for relegation. But right now, honestly, they're going to stay up, in my opinion. I really think they're going to stay up because they're just going to buy their way out of it. Kieran Trippier, of course, has signed from Atletico Madrid, which, I mean, you've gone from being a regular and playing Champions League football for Atletico Madrid to starting for Newcastle in the relegation zone. That says everything about how much money Newcastle have. And honestly, I find it really sad for football that the clubs like Newcastle can just, you know, they're so terrible, but you have a very good feeling that they will probably stay up. You know, like it's like Norwich. No one thinks Norwich are going to stay up, but it's like that in ways with Newcastle because Newcastle have a ton of money. You're saying, yeah, I think they could stay up. Norwich City. Why did I do this to myself? Why? I, no, I, I, was, I was just trying to be different, all right? I said they'll be 17th and the 20th. Obviously, of course the 20th. They're not rich if they're in the Premier League. Next season, they'll walk the league 100% in the Championship. Then they'll be relegated again. And repeat, it's what Norwich do. I was just trying to be different, all right? And what can I say? It's just the same old, same old, isn't it? They're not good enough. They're just not good enough. They haven't really got anyone in that team that you say, yeah, he is a really good footballer. Mateus Norman, to be fair, but he's on loan. Max Evans, probably, yeah, uh, as well, but... Again, they need more than that. They need more than that. Rashid has not been too bad either. Pookie cannot do it on his own. Plus the fact Pookie's not that young, is he? Southampton, I said 16th and they're actually an 11th, which they haven't been 11th for quite a lot of this season. It's only been recently they've actually got there, but they're in pretty good form right now. Beating West Ham, beating Swansea in the Cup, and now they've thrashed Brentford, like I said earlier. I think the future's pretty bright for Southampton with brand new owners. They have got, uh, let me try and pronounce this correctly, new owner, Dragon Solak, with a £100 million takeover, he's a Serbian businessman, yeah, I've said that wrong, without a doubt, it's been a bit of a stale couple of years really for them, and I do think their ultimate goal is to try and challenge for the top half of the league again, and in European football really, and maybe with this takeover they could do that. Got some good players in there as well, Broja and Liveramento at right back as well, been some good signs for them in the summer. Looks pretty good for Southampton right now. Spurs, I said 8th, they're actually in 6th. Of course, a very strange start to the season with Nuno Espirito Santo. It's 
didn't ever really feel like the right fit. He got sacked after about two months, brought in Antonio Conte, and has only lost three matches in 15 in all competitions, and none of those have been in the league currently, which is excellent. And I do think Spurs, they should really be trying to get the top four, and I think it's doable. Harry Kane is actually starting to perform again, which is good for them, and obviously I do think the long-term future in the Conte is pretty good. Probably won't win anything still because it's Spurs, but still, I think Spurs need to be going for that top four, 100%. Watford, I said they'd be 20th. I really don't know why I put them that low. They're actually in 17th, so they're still not doing anything special, really. But despite their struggles, it's just thankful that Burnley and Norwich are worse than them and currently Newcastle. Watford have had some good results this season, beating Man United 4-1, of course, was just incredible for them. But they've had so many poor results as well. And, you know, they have to be doing better um, than that. And, I mean, they're probably going to sack Ranieri, aren't they? Even if he survives, because that's what Watford do. Like, seriously, what is Watford's... What what are the Watford board expectations? Is it to survive? Is it to get European football? Is it to win the league? I don't know. I generally don't know at all. Because no matter how well a manager does, he gets sacked ultimately when they're probably doing all right. And it, it just is so stupid it generally winds me up and i don't even support watford west ham i said 10th they're actually in fourth which is unreal for them i did not expect them to continue what they did last season i think everyone thought yeah it was just a really good end to last season they won't continue it but no it, what i love about west ham is the fact that it isn't a team of superstars but they get the job done and they play some really good football bowen four hours rice suchek Antonio, just a really, really good set of players. And there's no one there that you can say is world-class, really, right now anyway. But they play really good football. And I'm sick of hearing people say, God, West Ham are doing this with David Moyes in charge. No, I think David Moyes has proven that he's a really good manager, you know. And West Ham deserve to be where they are. If they were to get the Champions League, particularly with the fact that they still don't have the best situation off the pitch with their owners, it would be amazing if they did that. And I generally would love to see that. Someone like West Ham getting into the Champions League. And as for Wolves, I said 12th. They're currently in 8th place. It's been a much better season than last year. Obviously, the first two years in the Prem. They got the Europa League. Last season was quite a drop-off under Nuno. His final season did not end in the best way at all. And it was always a little bit up in the air this season, really. How are they going to cope without Nuno in charge? But I think Bruno Lag. Lager, large, I'm not sure how to say his name. He is Portuguese though. I think he's done a good job. You know, he has done a good job. They had a poor start losing the first three matches, but since then, real improvement. They've been higher than eighth at times. They've been sixth at times this season. A few too many draws of late and a few too many games where they haven't scored that many goals of late has been a little bit of a negative and it has kind of made them drop off, drop off a little bit. But still, overall, it's been a pretty good season for Wolves and you can't really ask much more of them. So that is my reaction to my Premier League predictions. If you would like a bit more top flight content on the channel, let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than keen to do it. Obviously, Forest is going to be there next season. So, you know, perfect excuse to do some. But anyway, if you have enjoyed, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you for my Millwall reaction this weekend.